Okay, we're back here Which live one? here at HP Discover 2012 Middle. in right. Frankfurt, Germany. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE.com. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. We had a big day here, uh, ending day one here at HP Discover, and uh, really the, the key themes that we're finding is software-led infrastructure and big data. Those two elements that we've been covering on SiliconANGLE through our, our publishing group and our research team at wikibon.org is the centerpiece of HP's entire strategy. Everything that HP's touching is native, software-led infrastructure and big data. That is the key report that we're finding. And my co-host Dave Vellante is joining me here. Dave, totally John, there with big data and software-led infrastructure. Yeah, John, I have, um, I'm thrilled to introduce Sean Kenny. Sean is a longtime CUBE alum. He's been to the Wikibon offices. He's, uh, he he's, uh, runs product marketing for EMC, uh, for sorry HP Storage Group. Used to Easy. be at, used to be at EMC, <laughs> which is why I love the the action that's going on in the industry because Sean's got that DNA. He's not afraid to take off the gloves. Well, I mean, let's face it, HP brought a lot of folks uh, into the Storage Group. I've said for years, Sean, before you guys joined, HP is sitting on the huge opportunity, but they're they're a server company that doesn't understand storage. When Donatelli came in, that changed. And he brought in people like yourself, Tom Joyce, Randy Seidel, and on and on and on, and, and others as well. Yeah. I know some folks joined from, from NetApp, but storage DNA, that's what you have. Mm -hmm. And um, you're aggressive, you know what it takes, you know, and you're having fun. I, I love it. it uh, and a lot of people put in a lot of work to get to today in engineering, starting in HP Labs, you know, the three-part team. It, uh, today is a good day for HP because if you think about it, we changed the industry and if our customers do it right, they change their buying patterns, we simplify their life, we're going to reduce architecture's complexity in their infrastructure. You know, it, uh, if you think of all the products you have, you have some in the mid-tier, some in the high-end, some out at the edge, some in the data center, all different products, different architectures, it's impossible. Now you think you have, what, two or three vendors? But, so you multiply that and it becomes exponential in terms of the amount of products and architectures you need to manage. HP message, HP's message as of today is, hey, one, one primary storage architecture, one disk-based backup solution, no matter where you are, no matter where you want to perform deduplication for backup, and one platform for big data. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, and, and again, back to my earlier diatribe, when, when Donatelli came in, a lot of people expected, okay, instant turnaround, oh. and that didn't happen, obviously. Uh, the three-par acquisition was a, was a key move. The store wants organic, content, yep. that's been key. So okay, so let's talk about the strategy. One platform for primary, one platform for backup, and one platform for archive, right? That's right. Okay, now so the dissonance in that is, so you've got some, you've got some older legacy platforms, you're, you're moving those to the primary. Help us understand the positioning of the new three par. So first of all, let's talk about the new three par yeah. moving down market, and, and help us understand the positioning relative to uh, the products from left hand. Absolutely. The store virtual <coughs> products. So we'll start with 3PAR. Customers for years and market research companies have segmented mid-tier architectures and enterprise architectures. Mid-tier architectures, dual controllers, you buy kind of the brains of the operation and then you rack up disk drives. Uh, enterprise architectures, multiple processors, multiple paths in the back end, and that was a clear split. And it was performance and scalability and fu functionality and yes, price. And so customers always had trade-offs and compromise. What 3PAR StoreServe has done today is you've, we've basically obliterated and eliminated that boundary in that you get all the enterprise functionality, you know, a four controller architecture, tier one enterprise data services that are running the, the most advanced service providers on earth, you're now getting that at a mid-tier price point. So those traditional market segments, they no longer exist. You know, HP's tagline is storage without boundaries, we've now eliminated the boundary between mid-tier and high-end. And you're talking mid-tier price points of 40,000 US, yeah. down to 25,000. 
Yeah. We're in Europe, so I guess we should be talking in Euro. What's 20 that? and 30,000 Euro, 30, respectively. Okay. So yeah. Dell wrote a blog post today saying that they, their customers prefer um, Dell Fluid over HP. How do you respond to that? Because I tried to get David Scott to go beyond EMC and talk about the competition, so let's talk about the competition. Let's start with sure. Dell. I, uh, I haven't read it, so I'm a little bit of a disadvantage, but... Well, they said storage legacy, which could be meaning a little bit of the older but let me stuff. Just, let me just add to that. Dell is a great example. I'm glad you brought that up, because Dell, in my opinion, is one of the companies that takes integration seriously. They even say our, our R&D team is our checkbooks. You know, we bring that in, and then we, we try to integrate. So I give them, them high marks, and, and your strategy is to have commonality across the portfolio, so... I would actually say our other strategy is HP innovation research and development, investment in engineering. You know, I, uh, I haven't looked at Dell storage numbers recently, but I think overall, since the height of the EMC Clarion Dell relationship, I think even with the Compellent deal, I think they're still going backwards a bit. I, my response to the Dell comments, again, without having read the articles, this is conjecture. Well, fluid data in particular. I think it's, uh, they were trying to make something out of nothing and they knew this HP announcement was coming and Try to steal a bit of well, so let's, let's talk about that. So the three-par um, mid-market product, block-based storage. Yep. So or block and file-based. Block and file. Sorry, block and file-based. So, who who should be shaking in their boots, in your opinion? Um, I think anybody with a traditional dual controller architecture. Well, let's go down the list, starting with HP EVA. You know, we I'm looking right at the camera. We are not end of life EVA, and we have no plans to do so. We will continue to invest in that platform for our customers. At the same time, I will tell you, we are strongly encouraging our EVA customers now to move to 3PAR, and we've made it so easy with, uh, online, with an online import capability that it's easier to move from EVA to 3PAR than it is from EVA to EVA. Yeah, but can you guarantee any efficiency improvements? If I move? Absolutely. <laughs> that was a layout. That was a softball question. Guarantee, what happens if you don't make that guarantee? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. HP's got good guarantees. Yeah, that guarantee. I, I read the fine print on all that stuff, and you guys got good ones. You know, the <laughs> other thing about that guarantee, so we've had it out for a year. Uh, we're the only ones that offer anything like it. And this is basically saying, we guarantee you can use 50% or less storage when moving from a legacy array to three par. You know how so many claims we've actually paid out? Zero. Um, the guarantee is a great marketing, I'm telling you guys, that's really awesome programming right there, I got to say. Uh, my By the way, I got to say, just some props to NetApp too. NetApp's got some decent guarantees out there. They're not as aggressive as you guys are, and it's not as frequent, but their fine print is pretty good too. They'll stand yeah, behind what they I say, would, uh, and I'll give them credit. You know, NetApp has, NetApp kind of has that one size fits all model as well. Right. But where they struggle, and I think you've seen this over the past years, is they're still at a dual controller architecture. You know, that's where they started many years ago, and I think they've extended it almost as far as they can, but they can't scale into an enterprise architecture. So I think NetApp, eh, they may be a little nervous. Well, we'll see it. if clustering changes Sean, that, but we'll, we'll see, yeah. Uh, Sean, so you run, you, run, you run product markets, so I got I to ask the, the marketing question, which is, is it converged storage? Is it software-defined storage? Polymorphic how storage? You, how you guys look, I mean, they got a lot to hang, hang around. I mean, yeah. it's like, you know, it's like you go to Nordstrom, you see the, the mannequins hanging together, you get the hat, the shirt, you know, the sweater, slacks. I mean, you got a lot, of meat on the bone with storage right now with 3PAR, yeah. so, and 3PAR is changing the game, but I mean, which, how do you look at the marketing challenge? I mean, you're looking at it and saying, I mean, because con Converge, although Donatelli's big into it, it kind of has an older meaning to it, although convergence is a relevant word, but software-defined is the hottest thing right now. Software-defined networking, software-defined servers, that's good positioning, I mean, customers get that. So, what do you, what do you guys, how are you going to vet this out? What, what are you leaning to, and what's your, where's your head at on that? Sure. Uh, our strategy is converged storage. Now our converged storage platforms have three pieces in common. One, they're built on industry standard servers, which in case you're wondering, HP sells trillions of with uh, ProLiant. Yes, ProLiant, trillions is an exaggeration. <laughs> oh, the IR guys lot, get, yeah. get in trouble. But not just but, HP servers, like any servers. Uh, well, HP converged storage is running on HP uh, servers. Then it's scale out storage software and common management. Now if you think about that base, the foundation is industry standard components. So it's not that far of a logical extension to say, hey, we'll get to a point that we can run software on other stuff. And we do that with uh, Left Hand, and we've uh, been doing it actually since 2007. And so when other virtual storage appliances come out and they talk about all the limitations, you know, we have a fully functional storage platform that can run on anybody's server. And we've done 
you know, we've distributed 150,000 licenses. So I like to talk about pioneering, because you know, when people pioneer, and if polymorphic becomes a pioneering term, then I'll eat my, my shorts and shave my head. I look forward if to Joe watching Tucci that happen. Joe says uh, polymorphic, Joe <laughs> Tucci will probably say it to burn my ass, because I hijacked him in the hallway a few times <laughs> with, the, with the social cam. Um, <laughs> uh, but talk that about- I'd like to see too. But talk about left hand, because Dave Scott, David Scott said that they pioneered uh, storage virtualization. Absolutely. And there's not a lot of discussion around that, because left hand kind of got weaved in and not didn't get the fanfare. Could you just uh, un unpack the left hand pioneering milestone and what, what's that all about and what does it mean today? Sure, so Store Virtual, built out of our left hand product and left hand acquisition, continues to be our solution for client virtualization and it's our lead horse in this virtual storage or software led storage, software defined storage um, area. We continue to offer it to our customers. They use it in all sorts of ways. And the best thing about our customers is they deploy in a way sometimes we hadn't thought of. They're like, oh, did you know we use it for this? We use it out at the edge yeah. for really small environments because I have an extra server lying around. And by the way, it can be an IBM server. It can be a Dell server. It doesn't have to be ours. And then I replicate the data or I run it in a metro cluster environment across a campus. Uh, the flexibility of software-defined storage is fantastic. And on top of that, if you already have the infrastructure, whether it's extra disk or whether servers, it becomes a fantastic proposition. So obviously cloud is the new infrastructure, it's just a combination of all the enterprise stuff, on-premise, hybrid, public, all that stuff. But one of the, one of the sacred cows in, in uh, one of the key elements in cloud is virtualization as, as well as your area. But one of the sacred cows in this area that people are talking about is the hypervisor, right? So the commoditization of the hypervisor is a big trend, but people are really, looking for agnostic approach to the hypervisor. So the fear is, if people treat the hypervisor as their own, you have that lock-in. So I want to move a virtual machine around. So you guys said yesterday that you're hypervisor agnostic. Is that yes, true? absolutely. And yes. what does that mean going forward? What is the, the headroom? What, is that, what kind of headroom does that give the customer? Uh, I would describe it as flexibility and options. You know, a customer isn't locked into you know, VMware today. Maybe they're looking at Microsoft. But that fear of, if I make a decision today, am I locked in for the next five years? That fear's gone. And maybe it's the other way around. But maybe it's Hyper-V first. You know? But you agree though that this hypervisor sacred cow thing is going on, that people do want to keep it to themselves, that the world wants The hypervisor hi vendors? The hi of course they do. The world wants a <laughs> the ability to move virtual machines without being hypervisor agnostic. Okay, I misunderstood. Yes, uh, absolutely. You know, they, uh, it's competition, yeah. and competition drives down prices, and you know, the classic market economy. So what about NetApp? So on the Q&A yesterday, David Scott got the question about NetApp and he made an off the hand comment about they have multiple controls. I didn't really un understand that. What does that mean? Sure. So you know, going back to Dave's question about mid-tier architectures with dual controllers, that's NetApp. Okay, got it, uh, okay. And so you, know, you started with, hey, who should be a little bit nervous about this response? I started with, you know, we're talking about our EVA customers. Obviously Dell is sensitive to it, right? Yeah. Uh, people you know, need to anybody in that What about VNX, what about the VNX? How do you think they're going to respond? <laughs> um, I think they should You know be those guys nervous. well. I mean, uh, how, Very well. What do you think the response is going to be? Uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, one of the things we do, and my counterparts, all the other companies do, is we try to figure out, all right, what's the competition going to say in response? Like, where are potentially the holes? I don't know. I, uh, I don't know. All right, don't, now, back to my earlier question about the position, because I'm still a little unclear on the positioning between uh, store virtual and, and the low end, new, new three par mm -hmm. store serve 7,000. Yeah. Sure. You know, we talked about a single platform, a single architecture, from mid tier to the high end. That is three par. You know, for if you want software led or software defined storage, store virtual is there. If you want client virtualization, Store Virtual is our preferred solution. If you want a pure iSCSI solution, Store Virtual is our so preferred. So obviously protocol, well that makes yeah. sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I understand that. But so, but it's really not one architecture for primary. You're saying it is in, it, in that it's three par. It is. But I mean, left hand's alive and well. Right? I mean, it is. Uh, so. you know, if you're thinking about scaling up into the enterprise, whether today or in the future, that's the three par answer. Yeah, and okay. if you're an enterprise today, I'm going to tell you it's three par. How, what's the channel telling you about this? Because there's, you know, you're moving a lot of product um, through the channel, and now you, you're offering, now of course you're selling three par through the channel as well, but there's more of a direct sales presence there. Yeah, I would say uh, we've had a price tag on three par 
to put it out of the reach of many channel partners and many channel customers. Right. So they, and we were involved in a huge training effort to get to today. You know, we trust our channel partners. We gave them information ahead of time under non-disclosure. Yeah, of course. What did they say? Thank you. You know, they're going to make a lot of money with this. Yeah, okay, so they're not concerned about the positioning, they're not sort of asking us, no. what are they asking you? What are they, what are they asking uh, you to do to make their lives easier? So other how quickly can I get margins. it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Give me more points. How quickly can I get it, and you know, when, can I get when can I get one in my lab so I can show my customers? You know, all great questions around demand. Um, you know, for many of them, this is the first time they've sold three parts. We actually had two challenges with channel training. The first was teach them how to sell a scale-out architecture, because for many of our EVA customers, it was the traditional scale-up. So they had to learn something new, and they had to learn how to sell three-par. So that uh, sort of dual challenges. I think we did a pretty good job, but the you know, first six months are going to tell us. The so when can they get it? Today. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> we actually awesome. took, uh, I can't tell you how many, we took a decent amount of orders already getting to today. And we haven't talked much about the whole backup space. Maybe okay. we should spend some time there if you got it. Always. Um, it's like being a rock star. So I'll awesome. set it up because um, I think that many, many people may or may not know, but so you've got a situation where the market leader EMC acquired uh, Avamar years ago and then data domain blockbuster acquisition and, and a, a, attained at its peak about 66% of the market. Big, big chunk. Really you guys weren't there. Really nobody else was there. Mm -hmm. um, where, how has that picture changed and how are you going to you know, unseat that uh, dominance? Sure. Uh, they grew by acquisition. Uh, two acquisitions, two incompatible technologies, two really different approaches to solve the data protection challenge. And data is scattered everywhere. It's in the data center, it's out at the edge. So they chose to have two different products, one for the data center, one for the edge, data domain and Avamar. We took a different approach, and when we launched Store Once uh, back in June of 2010, we said, hey, this is a flexible architecture that can be deployed anywhere. The core Store Once algorithm, uh, which came out of HP Labs, I know Alistair was here earlier, wasn't tied to the file system, to the operating system, to RAID, to hardware, to anything. What does that mean? It means we could put it in a lot of places. When we came out with the announcement, we said, hey, we have our small and mid-sized products today, this is June of 2010, but we're going to put it in an enterprise scale-out architecture. That was uh, November 2011. We said, hey, we're going to put this in software with Data Protector, and we're going to be able to put it on a media server. Well, that was Store One's Catalyst in June of 2012. Now what we're saying is, hey, now you can run it on those Store One's Catalyst, on those mid-tier appliances. So really, you have one architecture, one T-duplication implementation, and you can perform duplication on backup data anywhere in your environment. So it's, for a customer, it's, it's a simple choice. Do you want two architectures or one? Because you have data in both places. And on top of that, do you want data protection strategies that match your business requirements or do you want to have to implement data protection strategies that are driven by technology requirements and limitations you know, of the products itself? our customers can now do things that previously were unachievable, whether it's backup or disaster recovery. So I, um, yeah, you know, give EMC credit, 60 plus percent market share, but uh, we continue to grow, we continue to take market share, and uh, it's a good business for us. Yeah, them. I mean, I give them a lot of credit, it's hard not to. You know, that, I was skeptical of that acquisition at the time, they obviously proved me wrong. Uh, they kept it out of NetApp's hand. Yeah. NetApp's had to take a completely different strategy now, which by the way, I like, I like their, their tack, it's different. It is know, different. So, you know, I we'll like their Amazon move. Up. I mean, their Amazon thing I thought was pretty interesting. Ooh, I mean, what's your take on that? I mean, that looked you know, like a good I just move. read the headline today. I have no opinion. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so my question is, on the, you guys did a great job yesterday on the announcement. Thank you. And you had a little big data in there with the autonomy thing. I know you didn't spend a lot of time on it, but the question for you is, how are you going to bring in the big data? Because big data really has a big storage component. Absolutely. It's under the covers, but it's really important with the SSDs around the corner. You guys are doing a lot of work, for, uh, and you didn't talk about that either. Uh, much about the, uh, the solid state uh, yeah. innovations. I'm sure that's coming. Um, fun, well, you can tell us. Store but, yeah. service here today. Yeah, I mean, but it but it wasn't really talked about yesterday. It was a big announcement. We didn't want to take away from it. But you got solid state and you got big data. Two of the hottest trends on the planet. How are you going to bring in the positioning with big data? Because 
you know, we're, you know, we're saying it's native within HP now that big data is kind of sprinkled from laser jets, storage to services everywhere. So yeah. how, do you, how do you manage that? Sure, let's take the big data question first, then I'll get back to SSDs. You know, big data, and I think, I think I saw a number that by 2015, customers are going to spend $15 billion on big data between server storage, you know, software, it, uh, and the lion's share of that is going to be the storage. And big data has two fundamental problems, or really almost three. The first is, how do you store it? You know, how do you store it cost effectively? How do you have an architecture built you know, with petabytes in mind? First problem. Second, is it file-based data or is it object? And do you have two separate products or do you do file and object in one platform? Third, now that I have it, so we solved the storage problem, what do I do with it? How do I deliver competitive advantage? How do I learn more How customer insights? How do I insights? back it up? How do I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Like, what uh, should I back up, yeah. you know? Um, and that's where the integration with autonomy comes in. So store all, our scale out platform, that handles the storage piece, and it has all the worm and the constant validation for uh, data immutability, as well as policy-based tiering. So that's the storage piece. The second thing is, all right, how do I do anything with it? And that's where autonomy and the integration comes in. And we had, we announced something called Store All Express Query, which really allows you to scan, process, and you know, understand data. And we, some of our tests showed 100,000 times faster. You know, we ran tests of a 500 million file yeah, file no, system, I 42 think, hours to one I mean, one you guys second. are bringing that whole information management piece, I mean, you're integrating into one of the strategic um, pieces of the business, mm -hmm. and I think that's impressive, and I, wa I want to ask you, compare and contrast that with IBM, for example. So, you know, I, I try to get this in and have enough time with David, but, you know, IBM storage group, and David and I have been talking about this publicly, they're kind of different, right? They're like mm -hmm. the storage guys. Mm -hmm. And they're trying, they have Tivoli out here, and they yep. got the similar um, big company phenomenon, so how do you guys compare to uh, IBM both on a product and then also how they're organized. Uh, I can't comment on how they're organized. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can, but will, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Choose not to. Uh, okay. <laughs> but on a product capability, you know, I don't think, you know, I, sometimes when I look at IBM, I see HP of a few years ago uh, from a storage perspective. You know, they're the Unix guys. They're the mainframe guys. Uh, they kind of grew by acquisition on the storage side. They can't talk about polymorphic simplicity. You know, they can't talk about a single architecture for a primary storage, for data protection, for information retention. So I, uh, I think they've crafted a decent uh, yeah. big data story, but from on the product side, compared with uh, the Storall platform, I, uh, I don't. Yeah, you're kind of like, eh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, you know, cool. So let's summarize this, actually, as we can. I know, I know we're going to break, but, but we, yeah. so we've got the big guys, you, you guys re-emerging, you know, taking it's off fun. the gloves, I say. You're, you're very excited. You know, EMC gets more and more complex, but it continues to, to do well, no question. It's got the VMware thing going on. Oracle's this wild card, and we get that, the whole red stack piece. You know, HDS, you know, see what they publicly say, they grow every quarter, yeah. but, you know, okay, so that you got these, Dell is in there, I'm in the mix. You got four or five, you know, big, and NetApp, big storage companies now, all sort of doing their thing, all with significant resources, and then you got these startups, you know, Scale.io today raised you know, a bunch of dough, and they're claiming they do software, you know, uh, uh, lead only. You have these flash startup guys. How do you see that all shaking out? Is it going to be, are we essentially in an oligopoly where a few guys control the chessboard, they can pick off, you know, like, like EMC buys data domain, pick it off and neutralize, you know, that threat. Um, you know, you guys picking up 3PAR, beating Dell, Dell making the move, but you guys have all pretty much, you know, stayed in a, in a position to compete. Do you see that changing, um, or do you see that continuing? No, I, uh, I think oligopoly is probably the right word. Mm -hmm. Going back to your business school economics class. Right. Uh, you know, for the, for the, uh, the startup uh, SSD guys, I think there will be a shakeout. You know, it, uh, and customers have a choice. Do they want to buy a pure SSD box, really without the advanced storage data services and architecture, or do you want to take the benefits of SSD and plug it into a proven, uh, a proven architecture that's been bulletproof tested, you know, run by service providers? That's really the choice they have today. I think, um, yeah, I think. Over time, I think probably a couple of the SSD vendors will get picked up, and I think a, a couple yeah, will well, make it. And 
you know. I mean, the startups I'll sit and watch to see who's who. Yeah, but the startups to to to, to thrive, the startups got to be 10x better. That's the number. Know? Yeah. And how many of those guys are going to be 10x better? Maybe maybe a couple. Yeah. Some, and it's a lot, a lot of times hard to pick which ones. Mm -hmm. They emerge. They do what Data Domain did. You know, congratulations. Make a bunch and, of uh, money. Yeah. yeah it's but all yeah, good. I, uh, yeah. I think shakeout's probably the right word. All right, Sean. Sean Kinney from HP. Really appreciate you coming on. Absolutely. This is Always a, blast. a pleasure. Good seeing you. Thanks, Dave. Okay, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. This is theCUBE, siliconangle.com, exclusive coverage of HP Discover in Europe and Germany.